Can you imagine a Thanksgiving dinner without pumpkin pie? A party dip without guacamole? Or a simple stack of buttermilk pancakes without blueberry sauce and orange juice? We owe all of these delectable delights to honeybees. They not only affect one third of every bite we eat, but also how we enjoy the traditions created around our favorite foods. Beekeepers in the United States are experiencing a 42% loss of colonies annually. Some beekeepers have reported losing as much as 90%. We're still studying why we have colony collapse disorder, but there's several things that we know of that are, are contributing. One is the varroa destructor mite. It's a mite that came in from uh, overseas and began to affect uh, beehives. It's really like a tick. On, uh, on the bee, and bees have a hard skin, a hard skeleton, and as a result, it doesn't heal. So whenever that mite pricks the bee's exterior skin, it allows viruses and other diseases to take over, plus it weakens the bees. Insecticides are still a problem, particularly in urban beekeeping. They bring that back into the hive and it builds up and it affects the brood, the young bees that are, that are coming along. And then there's the changes in agriculture. Climate change plays a significant role in habitat loss. Severe storms like 2018's Hurricane Michael add to the difficulties that beekeepers already face. Michael toppled beehives and stripped flowering plants, leaving the surviving bees without food. Trucks filled with a sugar supplement and synthetic pollen were rushed from the Gulf of Mexico to commercial beekeepers in Florida and Georgia to prevent further hive loss. 17 states, including Georgia, have declared the honeybee the official state insect. This was due largely in part to how invaluable they are to Georgia's crops and economy. Agriculture is Georgia's largest industry still. Cotton is pollinated by honeybees. Uh, blueberries, peaches, the peach state, all require uh, pollination by honeybees, as do all of the watermelons, cantaloupes, pumpkin, squash. All of those vegetables and fruits that we consume on a regular basis require pollination either by honeybees, bumblebees, or some other pollinator. If all the bees left Georgia for whatever reason, the impact would be billions of dollars. If you thought that uh, the hurricane that passed through uh, last fall was devastating to the state's economy through agriculture, the loss of honeybees would be incrementally even higher. The University of Georgia is home to one of the most prestigious bee labs in the country. Some of the current research includes finding new ways to kill varroa mites without harming or compromising the health of bees. CEO Lee Catherine Bonner owns and operates a company called Bee Downtown. They have put a very interesting twist on bee education and getting more people involved in saving honeybees. I started Bee Downtown when I was a junior at NC State University. And what we do is we install and maintain beehives on corporate campuses and we pair that with a fully built out employee engagement and sustainability initiative. And so we, we play off of the analogy of a beehive towards a healthy company. We've had the privilege of being able to bring agriculture back to cities and, and to have employees get excited about it. And we're scientists, so we're collecting data from all of these hives, we're reporting it back to the companies and they use that in their environmental reports. The easiest way to help the bees is not to harm them. New beekeepers and hobbyists should also pay close attention to the health of their hives and the bees. To improve the quality and health of their bee colonies, uh, requires constant management. You've got to check all those pests that are infecting the hives and manage them and then action by the beekeepers to save as many colonies as we can when they start getting into distress. Homeowners and gardeners should plant honeybee friendly flowers such as buckwheat and yellow clover in their nurseries. Also, get rid of grass lawns. Use native plants instead. Another simple yet critical way of helping bees is to go easy on the chemicals read labels, use only what is needed, and avoid spraying them on flowers and plants that attract bees. Also, get rid of any standing water on your property that can attract mosquitoes, so you don't have to use chemicals. Finally, report unwanted colonies on your property to local bee clubs. In their effort to save bees, your local club may provide services that include removing swarms free of charge. Even this simple step makes a big difference in saving our precious honeybees.